And so the family actually requested that you hear her testimony from when she was 16 years old. My name is Megan Morin. My parents are Reg and Michelle. I have an older sister named Maddie, and we have been attending FGT for the past 11 months. Uh, growing up, I was in a loving Christian home. Uh, I went to a Catholic church. I went to Sunday school in VBS, and I always thought that I was a good enough Christian, but I never really had a relationship with God, partly because at my old church, they never really spoke about having a relationship with God. Everything was really set on tradition that over the years, God had become so like cold and distant to me. When I was in the seventh grade, my family left the church and started to look for the right church for us, but eventually we just stopped looking and my church life ceased to exist. Um, my mom has a disease called lupus, so around the time that we stopped looking for a church, uh, she got sick again and I got really scared and I felt like so alone, even though I had so many people around me to support me. And at the time, I just kind of got angry with God and I just, I didn't want to deal with him, so I pushed him out of my life completely. I still believed that he was real, but I always thought that I could just come back to it later when I got older. Like I could just deal with him when things got harder. A couple of years ago, I got a call from my cousins and they asked me if I wanted to come to this youth group here at FGT called The Uprising. I came in that week not really knowing what to expect. Um, I just kind of came in to see if I would like it. And I remember when I first came in, the band started to play. I saw Matt Wiebe raising his hands and praising God. For me, that was a first because I'd never really seen anybody feel that way about God before. So I looked around the room to see if anybody was staring at him the same way I was, but then I realized that nobody was. And I, I came back because I wanted to figure out why these people were so passionate about God. So over the course of the next few months, I'd come back to try and figure everybody out. Um, a couple months later, Pastor Michael was telling us about something called the Fall Retreat. I decided to go on it, and honestly, I just went on it because I wanted to ride some horses and hang out with my friends. But God had something different in mind for me. Uh, one night, Pastor Michael's brother-in-law, Mitch, was talking to the group, and he said something that I didn't really think I was ready to hear. He said to us, God's not something that you can just put off in your life. You need to, you need to have a relationship with him. And he started to tell us about how, if you let God in your life, how he'll change you. And I just broke down crying because I had realized that I had put God off so much and that I really did need him in my life to help me. So that night I gave my heart to Jesus and it was the best decision I've ever made. When I came back home from that retreat, um, I thought I was in a good place with God. Uh, I was happy, I developed a relationship with him. It was starting to grow, I was happy with it. But I guess God had something different for me. He wanted more from me because not long after that, my friend Zach was talking to me and he told me that I should start coming to FGT on Sundays. So I talked to my parents about it and 11 months ago, we started coming to FGT. I honestly don't know where I would be in life without the people at FGT and the Uprising. They've helped me come from the person who didn't want God in their life, who didn't want to be bothered with religion, to being on the student leadership team with the Uprising and being in the youth band. Um, giving my heart to Jesus was the best decision I have ever made. He has helped me become the Christian I am today. The reason I decided to get baptized was because in May, uh, our youth group, we went to this youth conference called Overflow in Waterloo. And one night when everybody was just praying, the atmosphere was just insane. Um, I could like hear the Holy Spirit talking to me and he really put baptism on my heart. And I've been praying about it for a while and I believe that this is the right thing for me to do right now. My name is Megan Morn and I'm ready to become a fully devoted follower of Christ but one of the last conversations Megan had with her mom turned into a testimony time. Shortly before leaving home and heading to hospice, Michelle and Megan were laying together and they recorded some of Megan's thoughts. The family wanted you to once again hear a little bit of that conversation. All right, so this is testimony round two, May of 24. And that's eight years since your last testimony. You've had a whole lot change since then. Uh-huh. 
what's going through your mind right now? A lot. I don't know. I know I'm headed off on the last bit of it. It's, uh, it can be intimidating as much as you want to sit here and say like, oh, I have no fear and I don't have a fear of death. Like I don't fear what's like beyond the grave and I don't have a fear of like seeing God. It is still scary to a certain extent. Just thinking that like, I'm not going to be here. That makes me sad. But where you're going, honey, it's going to be incredible. I don't know, there's going to be nothing greater than a, like that is the goal, is to get there. The whole point of why you live your life this way is to get there. It's not by good works. No. Anybody can live by good works and it can make you a good person, but you got to live by God's works to get here. You got to invite him into your heart. So since God didn't have you go on those missions like you wanted, do you feel as if you've achieved anything along with mission work by doing it here? I do. I hear like people talk to me about since they've heard my testimony, like when I was a kid that I recorded and how that's affected them. And I don't know, I recorded it when I was a kid. I didn't really think about it too much. Like since then, obviously it's like popped into my mind from time to time, but you don't think that the words you had back then had like held that much significance. Right. So just seeing like the things I had to say as a child, literally a child still have such an impact on adults right now is an amazing thing to think about and just something that I was able to piece together back then still counts as a mission for God and yes. the people's lives who I've touched and the people who I've met in that time since are testimony to like what my faith has become as well like you didn't have to go and do all these grand things to become a testament of God's living well. I love you so much. I love you too. Oh, glory to God. Someone say, look at all you're going through right now with, with all these cancers. People would say, why would you love a God who, who makes you sick? Because it's not just that he gave me sickness, he also gave me perspective. I don't know, I think I was starting to lock out on that in life a lot. Things are becoming easy, and that's not a bad thing to have an easy life. Everybody wants an easy life, but it's never promised you as a Christian. You're promised the opposite. That you live your cross to bear. Yeah, obviously I wish I got a different one. Nobody wants the one that's gonna take you out when you're young, but you get what you get. That's what you've done with it. I said it to you before, but I used to think that my mission from God would be going on missions trips and working with his people that way and spreading the gospel that way. And right. Turns out that was not going to happen. And I had a few years to figure that out and didn't figure that out on myself. And uh, God took some more measures to show me what he wanted me to do with my life. And now we're here. What do you think he's having you do? Spread it in a more intimate setting. And I think people don't think that that's as impactful a lot of the time. Just because it's a smaller group, you're not reaching as many people, but sometimes that can have just as many, if not more, consequences. So what about all of our friends and family who are brokenhearted right now? What's your message to them? I don't know. There's no one right way to love God. You just have to go into it with an open heart and you have to trust him. You have to be willing to submit parts of yourself that you weren't before. And it's scary and it's intimidating because you're having to admit to a bunch of flaws that you have and you're having to admit that there's changes you have to make in your life. And a lot of people don't want to have to do that. But it ends up being the best thing you're ever going to do in the long run.